Today we're going to talk about some important aspects of replacement chain. <clears throat> when it comes time to replace your current chain on your saw, there's some things you need to pay attention to. A couple of those items are, one, the pitch of the chain, two, the gauge of the chain, and the most important aspect of this is the length of the chain. <clears throat> the length of a chain is not determined by its physical length. It's determined by the quantity of drive links in those loops. A drive link is the portion of the chain that goes into the groove of the bar. The gauge of this drive link is important in relationship to the gauge of the bar. Those two items must match. The other item we need to talk about is making sure that the pitch of the chain you are purchasing matches the pitch of the drive sprocket on the saw and the pitch of the nose sprocket on the bar. <clears throat> to try and clarify one thing real quick, we manufacture two 3 8 pitch chains. One is 3 8 low profile pitch and the other is 3 8 standard pitch. You need to remember that these two pitches are not interchangeable. Those two should never be interchanged for, no, for, no, for any reason. They should never be interchanged. <clears throat> So we'll go back to pitch real quick. How do you determine pitch of a chain? The simplest way to determine the pitch of the chain is by measuring the center line of any three rivets consecutively and divide that by two. That will give you the pitch. <clears throat> you can also identify the pitch of our chain by the number that is stamped on the drive link. Not only will this number identify the pitch, it also identifies the gauge of the chain. Another important aspect to keep in mind when choosing a chain is you can, you can physically put a drive link gauge that is smaller and a bar that has a th uh, gauge that is higher. It's important to understand why you shouldn't do this. The reason that this should not be done is because the chassis of the chain <clears throat> is now no longer supported correctly in the groove of the bar. That chassis of the chain can be allowed to rock back and forth side to side as it goes around the bar and in the cut. This will accelerate the wear on the chassis of the chain as well as, as, well as accelerate the wear on the bar. Most of our chains are what we call a standard sequence. This basically means that there's a, a right hand left hand cutter pair separated by a tie strap. That sequence goes all the way around the loop. When looking at replacement chain there's some other things you may notice you may notice the configuration of the chain being slightly different than the one you take off your saw. This can be done, or can be as simple as a drive link having a bumper element in it. This means simply that there is a, there is a piece of material on the drive link that comes up in front of the depth gauge of the, <clears throat> of the cutter. Or your tie strap could be slightly shaped slightly differently. It may have a little bit higher piece of material on one side that's directly in front of that that cutter. All of those items are what we use in our chain types to determine if the chains are going to be either yellow label or green label. A lot of people refer to these as green label chains as safety chains. What this basically means is that a government mandated, bo government mandated body has stated that if a chain on a given power head kicks at a certain degree it's either yellow or green label. If it's below that degree, it's, it's green. And if it's above that degree, it's considered yellow label. All yellow label chains are considered professional user chains. Green label chains or safety chains are considered consumer use chains. <clears throat> it's best to apply those yellow and green labels to best suit your cutting conditions and your skill level with a chainsaw. I hope you found this information useful. And for further information and more specific applications for replacement chains, please use the selector guide on OregonProducts.com.